I just sold my 2010 Toyota Prius. It had about 220,000 miles, it was going on 230,000 miles, so it's time for an upgrade. After doing a lot of research, test driving a couple cars, making a short list, and comparing everything that I thought I needed in a car, I ended up with the 2016 Jeep Renegade. This is the limited justice edition all blacked out really cool features on it i'm gonna go ahead and tell you about them right now and tell you about why i got it two-week hiatus as I always do I'm always on like a really good run as far as making videos I'd recently gotten the XT30 and I was making a ton of videos on there the cinematics the reviews and all that and I do have more of that content coming up soon so after doing a lot of research I narrowed it down to a couple cars that I wanted ultimately I did get obviously the Jeep Renegade this is the Justice limited edition and while I didn't need that necessarily, it definitely was a cool one that really sold me on the vehicle as far as once I limited my search to the Renegades. There are many Jeep Renegades. This is the 2016 again, but there aren't a lot like this exactly. The Dawn of Justice Edition, it adds a couple unique features to it. Starting in here, we've got the dark seats. And these seats, while not being like the nicest available trim, it is unique to this model and it's just made to look like Batman's suit. It's cool. Actually, I prefer that it's not leather. I don't mind that it's not leather. In fact, it's just, it allows it to keep it a little cooler. It's not going to get ruined as easily from the sun. And overall, they're pretty good seats. They're plain Jane, but I mean, it kind of goes with the dark look of the whole car. The carbon black in here is also supposed to be pretty unique to this model of car. The black gloss accents at the front here of your grill are also apparently unique to this model. I already bought some red accents that I'll be installing in a future video that I think are gonna make the car pop a little more. Basically, I wanted to upgrade from the Toyota Prius. I wanted something similar to it. The Toyota Prius, if you haven't ha had it or driven it or you don't even know much about it, it's a hatchback hybrid that has a lot of cool features to it. While it might not look the greatest, it's super versatile in that it has a really big hatchback area where you can store a lot. It's relatively good for commuting. From that car, I didn't want to lose the hatchback. I wanted something actually a little larger. I began looking at, you know, the small compact SUVs like the Ford Escape. Uh, I was looking at the RAV4s, the CRVs. But the Renegade actually had a really sweet spot. This is a 2016 one. And I got this for out the door with my trade-in for close to about 13,000 taxes fees included. So again, after searching a lot, comparing a lot of options, I found that the Jeep Renegade, especially this one, had a really sweet spot as far as value for this year and this amount of miles. Now, features that are upgrades on this model but not unique to the car itself include the larger infotainment system, which includes a backup camera. It includes navigation. You do have the option of getting the 3G on this as well if you want unlimited Wi-Fi for $15 a month, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and I think it might allow you to use apps like Yelp, which who the hell is doing that in this day and age, especially when everyone's got a smartphone. This isn't gonna be as good as Android Auto, but it does have some unique features built into it without needing to use your phone. So again, it does have Bluetooth. It ties into my phone really well. I can do hands-free calling pretty seamlessly because you have the controls on here. Voice to text is pretty abysmal and telling it directions hasn't worked out too well. Other features that are kind of tied in with this do include your 911, your SOS, and your assistance here. I'm actually not sure what the assist does. Looking up there still, you will see that we do have that. So in addition to be electronically controlled, I can actually remove it using this unique key here. It's shaped like a Jeep. We do have the back one there as well, which is only um, done manually. What came with this car that I didn't show you was the little pizza bag basically, which holds these two once you remove them. I moved those back into the house just because it was taking a lot of space in the back and I didn't need that. We do have dual zone climate control, which is pretty good. The AC, when you crank it on full, does get pretty loud, but you have all these options in between. 
This is, as you saw in the back, the four wheel drive model. Never gonna need this, if ever. However, if I do need it, it's gonna be sometime in winter and it's gonna be hella good when I do need it. <laughs> hella good, okay. <laughs> Beats audio, that's Beats new single. It does have um, remote start, which is good as far as warming your car up in the morning, especially if it's cold outside. I do park it in a garage now, so it's not as necessary. However, it is a great feature to have. If you look to the front here, you notice a couple things. One, Jeep symbol, super cool. Throughout the car, there are, are a lot of Easter eggs, and if you look at YouTube videos, you can see where all of them are. Um, like, for example, there's a Sasquatch in the back. I thought it was a lane departure or front brake system. Don't believe it is on this model. It's just that the, probably just the rain sensing, which for something this big, just to turn on your wipers when it starts to rain, it's great, but I thought it was doing a little more, but I'm learning more and more about this car. It was a used car. Even the guys, the dealer who had this car weren't too familiar with the features on it. So I'm still looking through the booklet, just finding out everything that this car does or does not have. Originally, when I was looking at the cars, I was thinking I might've wanted the orange, possibly the red. Definitely not white, definitely not black. This color I think is a really happy medium and you know, it, it doesn't get dirty too easily and it looks super sleek. I was thinking of vinyl wrapping the hood and I think a color like this would allow you to have a lot of options without limiting yourself with a color like orange where only a select few colors might pair well with that. If you were to compare to the RAV4, the CRVs, the Escapes, a lot of them, God, are these people ever gonna shut up? And comparing this to them, this had a lot more features, options, and just a lot more uniqueness. You see all those cars on the road, that was the other thing that, if I was going to buy a new car, because I was kind of compelled between two options. That Prius was worth about 3,000, 2,000 really, once I reappraised it at CarMax. Yeah, it was still a really good car, and I wasn't gonna get anything just like it. I couldn't get an exact substitute for it, with lower miles and in a better condition for anywhere close to that price. I'd have to spend at least probably $7,000. In fact, looking at newer Toyota Priuses, they were at least $12,000 and they had really high miles and pretty much basic features, especially in comparison to this. Getting an exact replacement for that Prius wasn't really gonna be an option, so what I ended up deciding instead, obviously, was kind of getting something that lacked that really hybrid feature that I loved so much on the Prius. I mean, I was getting about 45 to 50 miles per gallon and I have a pretty heavy foot, so that's still relatively good. Whereas on this, I'm happy to get an average of 30 miles per, per gallon. However, I decided that that would be a worthy trade-off. If I was going to have to spend a good amount of money to get a car with the, kind of the features, the uh, newness that I needed and the low miles, what I would have to end up doing was spending about this range of money. So I didn't want something that was just, you know, everyone and everyone had. I have no minimum amount that I need to spend. Anything under $14,000, let's say, out the door cash, factoring in my trade-in, I wasn't really gonna find anything as unique as this car, in my opinion, compared to those other ones. Once you think about needing the year, the low miles, and starting to need some features, you're not gonna find anything like it. So again, I, I had to broaden my search radius because these aren't very common in the Richmond area. I actually ended up having to drive about an hour and a half, maybe closer to two hours, just to get this thing. This was from a dealer closer to the DC area. The other thing I was considering was, so this is a limited edition Batman vs. Superman one. Not something I need, but I'm a huge fan of Batman, and so is Mia, who's filming us right now, obviously. It goes beyond that. I mean, obviously, like, if you look at my room, I have a ton of Batman stuff in there. I'm, I'm a huge Batman fan. But beyond that, this is going to probably have better resale value, I'm hoping, just because it's not only a limited edition, but it's a harder car to come across. So, for example, if anyone wants a running gate, just because there are fewer of them on the road, what are you going to have to do? There's less supply of them, so that means the price hopefully won't dip as much. Other things I were, was considering were smaller hatchback kind of cars, like the Focus, kind of the Volt, it's Kia Soul, the Nissan Versa, is an ugly car, but I mean, that was part of the list, unfortunately. The kicks, but it was too expensive. The Nissan, and then going to the SUV, again, it was, the, uh, in addition to the ones I was stating before, it was also the Nissan Kicks, which there aren't any used ones, really, and the Nissan Rogue, too. For the amount of money, I wasn't really able to find anything quite like this, so that's why I ended up going with this. And then the Traverse, which you see behind us, or is that the Traverse, or is that the Equinox? One of the two. Something like that, and just comparing them, you know, you see these cars on the road everywhere. The Nothing Equinox. unique about it. And actually, we were just parked uh, behind one. The Subaru Outback is another car that I was considering as well. 
but they're kind of outside of that price point that I was talking about again, out the door of less than $14,000, all fees included. There are a lot of cars that are, you know, do about the same thing, they have about the same space or more space, about the same power or more power, but they lack that uniqueness. And tying in with that uniqueness, the other thing that I really like about the Renegade, which I think is very similar to what I liked about motorcycles when I was first into them before I sold my motorcycle, was the fact that, you know, there's more of a culture to it. Jeeps, you know, it's, it's similar to how when you're on a motorcycle, for those of you who are here from previous subscribers when I was a motorcycle rider or those of you who are motorcycle riders currently, but I mean, you, you do the peace symbol, you know, you do the two fingers down, just keep your keep your tires on the road, that's what it means. It's, it's, it's a culture thing, you know, you're waving to other people that are riding motorcycles. And then of course, there's there's the saying, it's very similar for Jeeps, you know, there's a saying that it's a Jeep thing, you wouldn't understand. And while I haven't gotten to that point of loving and like having a dedication to Jeep, I'm already seeing it. Just just for an example, just driving on the road, and I, this could be a coincidence, but when I was up in the DC area, the only people who would really let me like merge into traffic or who were a little more patient, more respectful, if you will, as far as driver etiquette were other Jeep drivers. I didn't have to speed up and try to like cut anyone across. These Jeep guys just, you know, they, they flashed their hype and they let me in. They didn't have a Renegade. They had like a Wrangler, I saw one with the Cherokee, but it just felt like there was more of a culture. I'm sure it's the other way with cars too, probably more exotic and higher end cars, like maybe a Porsche or maybe even a 350Z or something like that. But this is an entryway to get that same kind of bond, that same kind of community feel with a car that's still practical. While even you could buy a really old Porsche or something like that for maybe about the same amount, one, it's not gonna be as reliable. It's not gonna be your daily driver, chances are, at least if you have needs like me, where you need to haul stuff, you need to have something reliable, and that's a little more modern. So you're not gonna get that with those kind of cars, but with this, the fact that I didn't want a unique car, I wanted a car that kind of stood out, didn't you know, want I- a unique car? What? You didn't want a unique car? I did. You didn't say that. I didn't say that? No. So going back to what we said previously of wanting a car that was more unique, you know, not just the average car that you see a hundred of them on the road. You want a car that you see it in a parking lot, you know it's yours or you're proud to point out that it's yours without having to spend a boatload of money while also being pretty versatile. You know, this is a bigger car. It's not gonna be an issue with these bad roads that we have here. And it's got a nice boot. It can haul a lot in it. Granted, I'm thinking not quite as much as the Prius, just because the Prius was a little longer, but it is higher, so I can fit taller things in there. What I'm trying to get at is this is also pretty similar to the motorcycles I had. One of the reasons I like motorcycles wasn't going fast. It related to, you know, being unique. Not a lot of people had mo motorcycles in my area. I had a unique bike, and I made it unique. The way I made it unique were through the simple, cheap mods that I did that made it more of my own. I do have a couple things that I want to do to this Jeep. Simple things. I'm not planning on off-roading this or anything, but just things to make it a little more, I don't know, lively. Talking about mods, we got a box here which should have two of them. One, just a basic thing, and the other, an actual, what I would consider mod. First, this is just 50 millimeters of door trim. We're in a city where it tends to get scuffed and hit. You accidentally open it against another person's door. It's just good to have this. I bought it for 15 bucks, well worth having. These are angry lights. I wasn't sure if the ones for the Jeep Wrangler fit it, because I actually found those for about 10 bucks cheaper, but we're gonna go ahead and install these in the next video that you're gonna see on the channel, and I'm really looking forward to these. These are gonna make the car look instantly like 10 times more fierce. And with that, I think it's gonna be a car that I enjoy driving a lot more, especially compared to the Prius. You know, the Prius was just a utility car. I got in, got out, didn't really care about it. It wasn't like really putting the effort to really take care of it. So all this combined is gonna give me a car that I'm more proud, I'm more excited to drive. And yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I have a lot planned for it. And through this new chronicling journey that we're gonna be showing on this channel, we're gonna just kinda show you what we like, dislike about the car like I've done with my other review series. This is again the 2016 Justice Edition for the Jeep Renegade and I got a lot coming up for it so stay tuned for that. Wrapping up again, this is a pretty unique car. I'm really glad I got it. At first I was a little hesitant. Is this the right car for me? You know, I've never really researched Jeeps or really knew much about them but especially since getting it, I really do think it is the right choice. There were a lot of competitive cars but not ones that were like it, as unique to it and offer the same kind of features and value in my opinion. I do have, like I said, a lot of mods coming up for the Jeep, a lot of things that we want to do to the Jeep just to make it a little more unique, a little more true to the whole Batman feel of, you know, 
the John of Justice edition. And we're excited to see what we do with the car. We're going to take you through our review process of the car, what we like and dislike about the car. And, you know, guys, stay tuned. We appreciate it.